Winter is officially here in Australia and there's never been a better time to discuss indoor lighting. Today, I wanna to show you the perfect settings for twin motion indoor scenes. So let's get started. Let's dive straight into this tutorial. First of all, we have a very simple interior scene, glass windows to the front all the way across and a very open kitchen living dining experience. At the moment, it's very boring, it's very basic. Nothing exciting is happening at all. First thing we wanna do is of course, set up our scene. So if we went ahead, created one of our images that we wanna go ahead and export, align our camera angles somewhere approximately there. That part isn't too important, reset it. We can start going through some of our interior settings. Now, I'm gonna work my way through this relatively meticulously, but I'm gonna be jumping around the whole entire process because each individual element is in a unique order in my head, which doesn't mean it is the order you would like to do it in. So first of all, let's drop down to HDR environment, change to HDRI backdrop, and change our HDR backdrop. I've gone on to Poly High Skies and downloaded Autumn Field 4K because I believe it creates quite a nice color on the internal side of things. So with Autumn Field 4K set in, we can go back to our image 12, adjust our rotation of the sky until we're happy with the shadows that come in. So I'm relatively happy somewhere around there. Now we also wanna make sure our details for this HDRI backdrop are correct. So we use our positioning tool to put it in the center of our project, scale the size up all the way. So now if we look back around, we'll see that HDRI map is significantly larger all the way out. Now the height offset is wrong, we need to drop the height. So the HDRI map is well and truly below our ground level. Coming back inside, that resolves all of our HDRI issues. So we can now close that HDRI panel and not worry about it further. We want to next step to render and turn Lumen on. By turning Lumen on, immediately we'll get a much nicer image than the standard, but you'll see a lot of things immediately go wrong. Our interior scene goes extremely dark. Our sun is overblown and way too bright. So the difference between standard and Lumen is vast, but once you set up Lumen correctly, we have some realistic lifelike results even without path tracer so moving through this scenario here we want our scene detail to be maximum four we want our lighting update to be 0.5 because we're not too worried about moving elements and objects in this scenario we want our reflection settings all the way up to 10 as well last but not least we want to play with our shadows and our shadow bias you can see if i slide the shadows all the way up they will start creating unique and different shadows inside. And if I slide them down, they'll be very, very crisp, very, very dark shadows. Now, neither of those two is what I want. Ideally, you want just a nice soft feathered shadow and reduce your shadow bias so that you do not get shadows in the wrong places. For this particular setup, somewhere around 700 meters and 0.27 works okay for me. It can be up or down of that figure. It doesn't matter too much as long as it looks good for you personally. You may want even nicer, cleaner, crisper shadows. So you might drop that down to about 450. Next, we wanna come into our environment settings and drop down our details. This is where it is incredibly important that we do this right. This sun in twin motion by default is always completely overblown. So sun intensity, we wanna drop that down to five, potentially 10. We don't wanna go any higher than that because we want to be able to see the details and textures below the sun surface. The sun size in this scenario doesn't make too much of a difference because we're using a HDRI sky, so leave it where it needs to be. Sun reflection is up to you, but generally I bring that up to one as well. Ambient for me is always one, if not even higher. For now, we'll leave it at one until we get our lighting set up correct. Now here's where it gets interesting. Twin motion will always have very, very basic dark renders on Lumen on a Mac especially. But we don't want to have a dark, boring renders. We want them to really pop and stand out. So what we're gonna do is come outside to the front of our building, select lights, select one of our spotlights. Let's go ES4 for now. Face that 75 degrees into the building. Position it all the way out, all the way back. And then we wanna duplicate this. 
So we wanna have one meter spacings and above and below the window. So in this scenario, four replicas would be perfectly acceptable. Selecting all of those again, repeat the process for a horizontal direction. In this scenario, maybe we need 12 lights, uncertain, let's just copy it across. So now we have a wall of artificial lights in front of us. Personally, I like to put them into a container, call it fake sun, so it's easier to turn them on and off. Now, if we come back into our scene, I'll jump in the middle here, team. If you're having any issues following along with this tutorial, feel free to join the completely free Discord group down in the description below. If you need some incredible architectural resources, of course, davidtomich.com is down there as well. Feel free to check that out in your own time. We'll see not much has really changed just yet, but that's because we haven't adjusted our lighting correctly. First of all, let's turn our intensity down 10. Let's adjust our cone all the way to 180. We wanna adjust our color temperature to the same as that of our environment. So 6.2, just double check camera, drop that down to 6.2. And then we wanna increase the attenuation. By increasing the attenuation through the building, we get amazing natural light being brought into this space. So in this scenario, 25 meters is more than enough. However, it still looks a little bit fake now because we haven't turned our shadows on. So if we come down the bottom, turn shadows on, we'll get an even better look. If we continue to increase our attenuation, we'll be able to control that lighting more. And we can also increase the intensity if we need to. Now, last but not least, we wanna go down into miscellaneous and we wanna turn our reflection all the way to zero. If we don't turn our reflection to zero, what you'll find is anywhere in the window and the reflection of the glass, you will see a million spotlights coming through and we don't wanna see that. So that's why reflection has to be brought all the way down to zero. Now we move to camera, exposure and white balance. Our exposure, we wanna to increase to approximately 0.5 in this scenario. And then we wanna also enable local exposure. So we have highlight reduction and full shadow boost. If I drop the shadow boost to zero, the shadows get darker. If I increase it, it gets lighter. Same with the highlights. If I decrease it, the highlights get brighter. And if I increase it, they get less bright. All I wanna do in this scenario, because it's generally a white kitchen for now, is increase the shadow boost until I'm happy with the overall finished product. Now, personally, I like focal length set to 30 millimeters, 25 millimeters, or somewhere about there inside, so we're not getting too wide of a distorted image. I don't like any vignetting, I do like to increase my sharpness ever so slightly to about 10%. Generally, I turn para-realism on for architectural renders, but that is really up to personal preference. And the last thing I like to do is align my cameras. So even though I'm going to be turning and moving and adjusting, if, for example, I wanted to have a perfect bang on scene to this glass window, I could easily align the camera to the center of the window fly in and have the perfect scene very quickly set up. And the reason I said 25 to 30 is because sometimes you just don't have enough space inside of your building. So now one thing I'll point out is by introducing all of those extra lights, we have to go back to our shadows and increase our shadow bias a little bit further because we're seeing these lines come through in the floorboards, which we don't wanna see. So by increasing that shadow bias, we're taking away those lines and we're having a more realistic surface. Now, the next thing that makes realistic interior renders stand out is the materials and textures we use. Twinmotion has plenty of great textures available to you that you don't have to go ahead and find and download new materials. However, you need to fine tune the ones that are available. So for instance, if we go materials and we go plastic, we can drag and drop a red plastic onto this cabinet here, adjust the colors to white, and then the biggest element that we want to play with is the roughness settings and the metallic settings. By increasing our roughness, we're going to decrease that shine. And by increasing the metallic, we're going to increase the shine. So playing around with these two. So every texture always has some sort of simple shine to it because nothing is truly, truly matte is going to make all of your images stand out way more. Floorboards is one of those things that I've found just aren't perfect in twin motion so what i generally do is download a mega scans floorboard and then change that texture under details after we've introduced the new texture we can go ahead and adjust the uv settings 
increasing the scale until we're happy with the overall size and of course stretching on the X and the Y axis. Generally, I like to decrease the gamma ever so slightly and also the gain ever so slightly. If we need this floor to look a little bit lighter, we can always increase the lift and then that way we have a more natural, realistic looking floor. After that, we could go ahead and change additional materials, adjust their rotation, change their overall color scheme, making sure that of course we come down, we adjust our roughness so it isn't set to 50, so it always looks that little bit shiny. And if we need to increase our metallic settings, we can. Once that's completed, you wanna continue going through, adding a few more textures, for example, with the bench top, the tiles in the background, and the metal finish on this range hood. So I'll quickly add those as well. And finally, to finish off the render, we wanna add some discrete lighting elements. So generally, I like to actually model my lighting in twin motion rather than use long strip lights. So in this scenario, I'd go to my neons, I would select neon two and introduce it into the down lights. That glow would be dropped to 10, and I could also use that on this pendant here. If we come down into our materials and our library, we can then select secondary spotlights. So for example, we can use IES5 on each one of these spotlights here. Of course, the intensity has to be significantly lower because it is a daytime scene. You would barely see any of that light come through, but you would still see a tiny amount after which we can go ahead, replicate all of that for all six lights and do a very small area light for this pendant here. And of course, last but not least, we need to introduce furniture. We could go into intricate more detail, add handles into cabinetry, AC vents, diffusers, fridges, all of those sorts of things. But all of that will be identical to the process that we've gone through so far. So if we wanted to go into Sketchfab, find a stool, download and include something with a bit of pop of color like this Dima upholstered bar stool, drag and drop it, hit export, and then we're done. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button for more twin motion content.